Hello again, Dave Conser back with you to talk about the intermediate trees. So let's have some fun with this. Uh, those of you who've learned about junior trees, now we're going to add eight more for intermediates. So the first tree is our American elm. Uh, this tree has single alternating leaves. It has an unequal base. You'll notice that at the base of these leaves, the, the base is not really equal on each side. So we have kind of an unequal side on the American elm. It also has a serrated leaf margin, meaning it has teeth or uh, little uh, grooves and, and teeth on the edge of the, edge of the leaves. Your black cherry tree is different. It is also a uh, similar shaped leaf, but uh, different enough to tell the difference there. And it has very light serrations on the outside. It's a simple leaf, alternating. If you're lucky enough to see the black cherry fruits, that'd be good. This tree right here, if you trim off the branches, you don't want cattle or horses to eat it because it forms a cyanide type chemical when those branches and leaves wilt. So that it's a, a great tree, makes great, beautiful wood furniture, uh, but you don't want uh, grazers to be eaten on it. Black walnut, it's a little bit like pecan. The way I would tell the difference is that the number of leaflets on these compound leaves, there's going to be compound alternating leaves in black walnut, but there's going to be a bunch of leaflets there. So you see the difference there. Also, uh, before the walnut comes out of the shell, it's a, a big round uh, fruit like that right there. Your box elder. Um, people that don't know trees will step close to one of these young trees, a young box elder, and go, poison ivy, poison ivy, because the leaves actually look a little bit like poison ivy leaves. A little different, but we have a compound leaf. This is in the maple family, so it is opposite branching. You notice that those branches come out, uh, of those twigs come out um, from the twi twig there. The leaves come out in an opposite or uh, right across from each type of uh, branching uh, twig type habitat habit. And then uh, we have a compound leaf, three or five leaflets. And sometimes when it has three leaflets, it looks a little bit like poison ivy. Chinese tallow, this is a bad guy. This is one of our invasives that you're supposed to know. It has a real distinctive leaf shape. So make note of that leaf shape right there. Uh, sometimes when these trees have uh, seeds on them, they look like popcorn. And sometimes you'll hear people refer to this as a popcorn tree. But we are going to call it Chinese tallow. It's an invasive and it tends to spread. It gets into native habitats and, and squeezes out the, the good plants that are native to this area. So we don't particularly like this tree. Persimmon, if you ever get a wild persimmon fruit, like you see there on the right, and it's not all the way ripe and you go to eat it, it will literally turn your mouth inside out. It is very, what we call astringent. It, it just doesn't feel very good. Now, when those get all the way ripe and they turn orangey color, they drop in the ground, and oftentimes when they do that, they're soft enough to actually split, uh, and you eat one of those, it's one of the most wonderful fruits that you'll eat. The, the common persimmon leaf, if you're just looking at leaves, of course, they're a simple leaf. They alternate off the stem. They're taking their turn, coming off different places on that stem. If you look at the underside of a common persimmon leaf, it looks like broken window pane. If you look at the veins, they look like thousands and thousands of little squares on the bottom side of common persimmon. That's the way that I really know that we're looking at a, a, a persimmon tree. Slash pine, we've added a pine to our mix of pines. As we spoke about in the junior video, if, you, if the pine starts with an L, it has three needles in each fascicle or bundle. If it starts with an S, it has two. Slash pine has an S and an L in its name, so you're going to find bundles of needles with twos and threes in slash pine. You're going to find that the needle length is in between loblolly and longleaf. It's going to be about uh, six to ten inches long. Also, one of my really most favorite diagnostic features for looking at the pines is the twig diameter. So if we look at the diameter of this twig, uh, it is about the size of a man's uh, finger or the pinky, the pointer finger or pinky. That's about the diameter of it. With your, if you're looking at loblolly pine, it's going to be in bundles of three, and it's going to have uh, a twig skinnier than a soda straw, really skinny. And the longleaf is going to have a twig the size of a man's thumb. And you can see that way up in the tree. And it's a good way to be able to tell the um, pines apart from a distance. Also, you're allowed to pick up 
leaves and needles underneath the tree. If you're out in the field and you're wondering what tree that is, you're allowed to pick up those needles or leaves and look at them there as well. Just make sure if you've got two different kind of trees next to each other, that you might want to take uh, note of that and know that. Southern red oak, one of my favorite trees. You can make some beautiful wood furniture with this red oak that grows in the south. There's a northern red oak, but we have the southern red oak here. The way I look at this and know the difference, say, between this tree and turkey oak is the base of the leaf. And if you look closely at that picture on the left, the base of that leaf is bell-shaped. Remember, southern bell, southern red oak, southern bell, a bell-shaped base of that leaf. If you were looking at turkey oak side by side with southern red oak, you would have not a bell shape. It would be more of a convex uh, type uh, shape to that base, and also the lobes would go closer into the the vein in the middle there. So that's southern red oak, great tree. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at these intermediate trees. It's been my pleasure to talk to you about those. Uh, as we spoke before, you're welcome to go on the 4-H website and look at the trees there and uh, click on those different trees and get a, a really full and nice description, not just the leaves, but uh, the fruit, the twigs, the bark, and some things about the tree. So have a great day.